All right, you guys. Um, the topics we need to review would be distance formula, midpoint formula, factoring, and complete the square. Yay. Okay. So the mid, oh no, the distance formula would be if we have any two ordered pairs and we need to find the distance between them on the graph, you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to do it. There's a formula, but just looking at my graph, if I have a slanted line on a graph, if I find the change in the X's and the change in the Y's, I will make a right triangle with that slanted length, okay? So this would be like the A, the B, and then the slanted one, the hypotenuse would be the C. So we're using the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then we, to solve for C, you would square root both sides. So that's what the, the that's what the uh, distance formula is. Only to find the a, you have to subtract the two x's, and to find the b, you have to subtract the two y's. So let's do number one. We're going to find the distance and the midpoint. Let's start with the distance since that's listed first. We're going to do for distance the square root, and then we're going to subtract the x's, and we're going to subtract the y's. We're going to square them, a squared plus b squared equals c squared square root. So my x's are 5 and negative 4. 5 subtract negative 4. And my y's are negative 2 minus negative 5. So we're subtracting them. So from 5 to negative 4, what's that distance? 5 to negative 4. Yell it out. Quick math. 9 squared plus from negative 2 to negative 5. 3. So we've got square root of 81 plus 9, which is square root of 90. You're not going to put square root of 90 on the blank. Unless square root of 90 can't be simplified, but it can. So using the skills that we have collected over the past few years... You're not just going to put square root of 90. You're going to break that down and simplify it. What perfect square goes into 90? 9. 10 does not have a perfect square to pull out of it. So we get thre thre <laughs> 3 square root 10. That's how it happened. Okay. So our distance is 3 square root 10. If I actually wanted to know approximately how long that was, I would need to calculate it. But if I put in a decimal... We need to go over this because, was it your quiz? Yeah, it was your test that you guys just took that so many people missed that question where I said put the exact answer. The exact distance for this is 3 square root 10. Rounded distance would be 3 square root 10, enter on my calculator, approximately 9.4868329.81. That is still a rounded number because a square root that is not a perfect square is irrational. It goes on forever. It never stops. So if you use what's on the calculator, your calculator rounded. So the difference between giving me an exact answer and a rounded answer is I did not use my calculator. We need to understand that before you go on to that next course, what an exact answer is. Okay, and then the next part of this is we're gonna find the midpoint. And for the midpoint, the midpoint is the center of two numbers. And anytime you find the center of two numbers in math, you average them. We average. And it's just two numbers. So you add them up, you divide by two. So the formula is saying, let's add up the x's, divide by 2. Let's add up the y's, divide by 2. Average them, the middle. So I'm going to add 5 plus negative 4, divide by 2. And I'm going to add negative 2 plus negative 5, divide by 2. And this is from geometry. I know it's been a while, but you guys have done this before. So what do we get? 1 over 2, negative 7 over 2. So what's my, what's my midpoint? Caitlin, what's my midpoint? Yeah, 
exactly what I just wrote. One half, negative seven halves. Um, yes, I can put it into a decimal, but in upper level math, we tend to leave things as fractions, especially when the decimal is like a repeating number or something like that. We would definitely want to leave it as a fraction. Okay, number two, you get to do on your own. Moving on. Factor. All of these are trinomials. All of these are trinomials, okay? So for factoring with a trinomial, there are different methods depending on what teacher you had, how it was taught to you. The most basic method is just guess and check. So I am looking at this x squared here, and what do I multiply together to give me x squared? What well, multiplies together to give me x squared? X and x. What multiplies together to give me 9? 3 and 3 or 1 and 9. So if there's more than one answer, we got to figure out which one's the right one. So I'm going to guess it's 3 and 3. I also want to look at my signs. When I multiply the 3 and the 3 together, I get a positive 9. That means that the 3 and the 3 either are both positive or both negative. To get a positive when we multiply the 3 and the 3 together, they have to be the same sign. If they have to be the same sign, when I multiply them back together, when I do my outer and my inner, and I get a positive 6, then these should have to be positives. So I'm going to multiply my outside and my inside together. I get 3x and 3x, which does equal 6x, which means I have guessed correctly. If I had done 9 and 1, it would have uh, added up to be 10 in the middle. Now, this is not my final answer. What do I do with that now? Caitlin. I would need to make it x plus 3 squared. We just did a polynomial chapter recently where when there was more than one of those factors, we put them together. Okay. So that section is factoring. Please make sure you write it squared if that is what ended up happening. <clears throat> Question 12, 13, and 14. It says, what must C equal to be a perfect square trinomial? So the reason why I did number three is for a little bit for vocabulary. Perfect square trinomial That is a trinomial that factors to a perfect square. So you, it doesn't necessarily look like a perfect square as x squared plus 6x plus 9, but when I factor it, it becomes x plus 3 squared. That's a perfect square trinomial. Trinomial that factors down to perfect squares. Okay, so what we need to do with question 12 is what does C need to equal so that this will factor and become a perfect square trinomial? 64. How'd you get that? Because, um, so we're, why are you divided by 2? Good. So we know this has to be x and x. Looking at my signs, looks like it has to be plus and plus. The 16 comes from adding the same thing together. So if we divide by 2, we find out that we're adding 8x and 8x. So then I take that 8 and I square it and get 64. So how about C on question 13? 16. So if I'm setting up factoring, I know that these have to be the same and they have to add up to be negative 8x. So if I divide this by 2, I get minus 4 and minus 4. And I multiply those together, we get 16. Can you figure out not yell out? Can you figure out but not yell out this one?
I'm not going to call on you just because you raise your hand. Just curious who, who in their heads thinks they have it or wrote it down. A few people. Who would like to volunteer their answer? You want to, Marie? I got 25 over 4. 25 over 4 is correct for C. Can you tell me what you did to get that? I, um, I did 5 over 2, um, positive 5 over 2 times positive 5 over 2. Hmm? Yep. So here's the formula. AX squared plus BX plus C. Actually, let me erase something. A has to be one for this. Eh, maybe not erase it. Maybe I add it in. A, oops. In order for this little trick to work, A has to equal one. For this trick to work, A has to equal one. Okay. And then what we did was we took whatever the middle number was, B, divided by two, and then we multiplied by itself. We squared it. And that's what C equals. That is a formula. So when you guys go to do complete the square, I had notes over this at some point in chapter two, um, but it was a day that we were remote and some people didn't really do much with that. So I'm gonna go over it again. Completing the square. This is gonna be solved by completing the square. But completing the square itself is the motion that you really need to understand. I'm going to do number 15 with you. So to complete the square, what you want to do is we want to make x squared minus 4x into a perfect square trinomial. We want to do what we just did on the previous page. But that 2 that's sitting there, I don't like to try to deal with that. So I just move it to the other side of the equation to start, okay? You don't have to, but I think it's easier to do that. You don't have to, but I think it's easier. So that's the way I do it. And then I also try to stay organized. So I draw a square here because that's gonna be where I'm completing the square. If I do something to one side of an equation, I have to do it to the other side of the equation. So you will notice that my square is not just on one side. I can't just add a number to one side only. To get that number in the middle, we're gonna use that formula we just got on the previous page. We're gonna do B divided by two squared. So in this case, B is negative four. I'm gonna divide that by two and square it. And I'm purposely writing out these steps. So I'll get negative two squared, which is positive four. If I add four to one side, I have to add it to the other. <clears throat> So what we did right here, this is called completing the square. That's that step right there. The rest of it is solving. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to factor. The trinomial. So we factor that that's a that's a perfect square. We purposely made it be a perfect square. What I do to factor it, it it might be easy to factor this one, but sometimes it get confusing. So what I do is whatever I had in the previous step before I squared it, that's what goes in the factored form. So in the factored form, it's whatever I had before I squared and got the four. So I squared, I had negative two. So that's why I have a minus two down there. On the other side, I just have to add those together. So we factored the trinomial. Now we're just gonna square root both sides and solve it. What do I have to do if I square root both sides? Plus minus, because I'm gonna get two answers. x minus 2 equals plus minus square root 2. That doesn't square root, so I'm just leave it a square root. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And there's nothing else I could do, so this would be my two answers for x. It 
it would take longer. And since what we are learning right now is complete the square, it doesn't matter if it's easier. Okay. So yes, sometimes quadratic formula is easier. Sometimes it's not. Unfortunately, what we're doing in chapter 10, you can't use quadratic formula for. You have to use complete the square. So that's why we got to re review this. Okay. So some of these are going to be harder than others. I'm going to tell you that right now. Some of them are going to be harder than others. So I'm going to pick a hard one. Let's do a hard one together. All right. I'm going to go to 18. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to complete the square. But to do that B over 2 squared, to do that complete the square step, it can't start with a 5. So for this one, factor out the A must start with uh, 1x squared to uh, complete the square. Now, this one that I'm doing with you right now is way harder than any one that we would actually do for the next chapter, just so you know. This one is way harder than most. So as long as you understand the concept, this one is a little harder. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out this negative 5. And when I say factor it, I'm not dividing it. I'm keeping it there. I'm just pulling it outside of the x squared so I'm going to have 5, parenthesis, x squared plus 2 fifths, x. And I'm leaving a space because that's where I'm going to complete my square. The other side does not have anything to do with that 5. Actually, I'm changing the shape of what I just drew here. The numbers that go into these two spots are not going to be the same. Because really, uh, I normally show a step before this. Eh, maybe I'm I'm on a video. You guys don't have to erase it, but I'm making a video. I'm gonna I'm gonna re I'm gonna rewrite my first steps. Like normally we would start and say. I'm going to complete the square. And then I go and say, well, we have to, we can't have that five there. So now I'm going to write that step that I had a second ago. Okay, so the reason why I have two different shapes on the second step is because what goes in um, this fluffy cloud completes the square, but what goes in the square is five times this number. So the five on the outside, because it didn't disappear, we have to take five times that number to go over there. Okay, so to complete the square, we're gonna take two fifths. We're gonna divide it by two, and then we're gonna square it. So that's B divided by two squared. So 2 fifths divided by 2 is the same thing as 2 fifths multiplied by 1 half. So I get 1 fifth squared, which is 1 over 25. Did I lose you? Everybody knows where I got 1 fifth from? Okay. Okay but I can't put one fifth on the other side because the thing that is the square that I'm completing for both that a thing I'm adding on both sides is something divided by five is 125. So I have to put that five back in. So I'm going to take five and I'm going to like distribute it to the 125th, which is five over 25, which is one fifth is what actually goes in that side. That might be like the most challenging part of this. 
Okay, you will have to do that in chapter 10. It just won't be with fractions. It won't be ugly like that. Okay, once you've added it to both sides, now we can factor. So I will bring that five down. I'm gonna factor X plus. So what I squared before getting one over 25, what I squared is what goes right here. So I didn't really have to do much work for factoring because I had that step showing. What I squared is what goes in the factor. On the other side, I need to add fractions. We add fractions by common denominators. Negative 5 fifths plus 1 fifth is negative 4 fifths. So once I've gotten to this step here, now it's just algebra 2. How do we solve this equation for x? What should we do to get x by itself? Connor, what should we do first to get x by itself? Correct. We're going to divide both sides by 5. So when I divide this side by 5 or multiply by 1 fifth, same thing, I get negative 4 over 25. Still, we're just doing algebra 2 now. We're just solving an equation. Kira, do you know what you do next? Mm -hmm. Something else I need to remember, though. Right. So I'm going to do plus minus square root. I'm going to get x plus 1 fifth equals plus minus square root of negative 4 over 25. And I'm running out of space, so I'm going up there. Okay, when you have a fraction, square, square rooting a fraction, you can square root the top and the bottom separately if that helps you, which to me, it looks like it's going to help me. So what is the square root of negative 4? 2i, and the square root of 25, 5. So I've got 2 fifths i, or 2i over 5. And then we're going to subtract the 1 fifth. And I'm going to write that minus 1 fifth first, because we always put the imaginary stuff at the end. So this would be... One way you could write the answers. Another way you could write the answer. Oopsies. Another way you could write the answer would be to combine since they're both over five. You could, if you wanted to, write one negative one. Sorry, plus or minus two i over five. That's another way you could write it. Either would be fine. So some of these might be imaginary answers. You're just solving to find what x is. So now if you are like, out of all this, you're like, you know what? Complete the square is what I need the most help on. That should be the first thing you work on today. To see if you can get an answer by yourself, okay? Um, we are not going to work on this the rest of the bell. We are going to, at some point, stop if you didn't get done with this and then do our Desmos thing, uh, the thing that I have on the, the notes for today. But work on this for a good 20 minutes or less if you need it, okay?